Hello, Flat Earthers. I am Bedro Ironside, and I am here to talk to you about the way you explain the effects of gravity as density and buoyancy. Just in case somebody doesn't know what is going on, it is 2017 and everyone can use the internet. Which means now it is time to celebrate the likes of Kim Kardashian. Gravity no longer exists and the Earth has become flat. I think there is almost no way to know something that is observational for absolute certainty. This is why we create models with the goal of describing our observations accurately and scientific models that have the added benefit of predictive power. We all know that dropping something makes it fall. Flat earthers claim that gravity doesn't exist and some say it is somehow a conspiracy. They attribute the phenomenon of falling objects merely to their density and buoyancy. Let's hear one explain it before we examine this model and put it to the test. The reason why things fall or float is because of density and buoyancy. If something is heavier than air, it falls. If it's lighter than air, it floats. Very straightforward. Your phone is denser than the air, therefore it falls when you drop it. Everything works because of density. No need to factor in imaginary components. No, it's not, is it? No, it's not, is it? As you noticed, there is usually no scientific papers, no calculations, or anything to substantiate the claim. In my opinion, this explanation demonstrates that flat earthers do not consider the implications of their claims and the paradoxes they present. Allow me to elaborate. The first fundamental mistakes made here are, you are assuming that it has to be either density or gravity that is responsible for falling objects when in reality both are accounted for in physics and they work together. The notion of gravity doesn't mean that no other forces can apply on an object. The second fundamental mistake is when you say not gravity but density and buoyancy, you missed the fact that density itself is not a force at all. Density, donated Greek letter rho, is mass distribution over volume. This is why this is measured in kilograms per meters cubed, and that means that alone cannot cause any object to fall or even move for that matter. Buoyancy, on the other hand, is a force, but it is an upward thrust force. Keep that in mind for later. The question becomes, how does that explain objects falling towards the ground? If it is said that the difference of densities between an object and the air is responsible for it falling, then we should expect denser objects to fall faster than less dense objects, since they have a much larger difference ratio compared to air. That is to say, if an object is too dense, then buoyant force will be less on it and we should observe it to fall faster. This isn't really the case in reality. Objects with sufficient weight accelerate towards the ground with the same acceleration. That straight away can tell us that this model or this type of explanation for the phenomenon is really too basic and should not be used. But it actually gets worse. Let us consider an object that has not been dropped into freefall, but instead is thrusting forward with an initial force and acceleration, for example a ball that has been horizontally thrown. Apart from its initial throw, why does it always accelerate towards the ground? Remember that pressure is the same on all sides on an object that is completely submerged in a fluid and air resistance is identical because it's in the same altitude. So why doesn't this ball ever fall upwards or towards any other direction since the air is pushing it with the same force on this side? What makes it accelerate towards the ground? It is still fighting the density of air but in this horizontal axis because that's where we threw it. So it is moving through the air, but why does it accelerate downward? This discrepancy in their model gets even worse as we take a more aerodynamic shape, which has air pushing it this way to see it still accelerate downward into the ground. How do projectile motion works on a flat earth? What is the physics behind it? Even if we throw something upwards, what causes it to slow down until it stops and then accelerate towards the ground again? But 
this gets even worse. Let's go one step further. The air atmosphere gets thinner with higher altitude, which is why mountain climbers supplement with oxygen and is why altimeters, which are barometers, even work in the first place. If that is the case and gravity doesn't exist, we should expect to see that objects in free fall from high altitude will fall noticeably faster and we should see them and observe them slow down gradually in free fall as the air gets thicker causing the buoyancy to increase which is a byproduct of the object to fluid density ratio changing. I will say that again. The atmosphere is thinner at higher altitude. If we drop something from there then the ratio of density to this massive object to the air is higher. We should see it go faster and we should gradually see it slow down as the air gets thicker because buoyancy increases which is the upthrust force and the density ratio decreases and gets smaller. Reality disagrees. Instead, objects fall and accelerate with the Newtonian acceleration of 9.8 meters per second square. These paradoxes alone are more than enough to show us that a lot of flat earthers don't really do and is more than enough to conclude that this is a rushed out alternative to gravity with no scientific basis nor attention to implication as well as complete absence of predictive power and patterns which renders this model useless and not even worth consideration. As you would expect, it gets even worse. I wish I, I I wish I could say I was done. I I re I really wish I could say I was done, but I'm not. I'm not done. If we attribute the reason objects fall to the ground to their density and interaction with air creating buoyancy, aka the upthrust force, we can put that to the test by creating what resembles a vacuum, such as a vacuum chamber containing two objects largely different in mass, for example a bowling ball and a bunch of feathers, which are obviously different in their densities, but air is now eliminated. When we drop these objects into free fall with air eliminated, what we see is that they fall both at the same time rather than float with the Newtonian acceleration of 9.8 meters per second square again suggesting that there is another force at play which we call gravity. If this was due to density and buoyancy, air is not present here. A cheap version of this experiment can be done by any flat earther or anyone at all. It is really simple and it's been done time and time before and I've done it even myself using a bolt and a small feather. What explains these objects falling? down even though there is no air for us to even consider the difference between the densities the ratio simply either becomes infinity or zero because of the division this is inescapable all of that should be more than enough to show that their model is at best needs to be reconsidered and it is rushed out and at worst complete garbage but it gets even worse. Because most flat earthers from what I saw don't do math and physics and I couldn't find any research paper by a science certified flat earther in the subject, the paradox this claim presents is not only observational but also mathematical. Guess what? The buoyancy force, which they are fond of, which they explain the phenomenon with, is not even a force at all in their model. Of course it is in physics, but let me explain what I mean. Forces are expressed in kilograms times meter times second to the negative two. We call this term a Newton. Now buoyant force has a formula of V, Greek letter rho, times G. That is to say volume times density times little g. Notice the term small g. G is the acceleration due to gravity. So buoyant force needs gravity to even make it a force. If we look at these in units, it becomes meter cubed times kilograms per meters cubed, which is density, times meters per second to the negative two. The terms of meters cubed cancel out with each other, leaving out kilogram times meters times second to the negative square. Does that look familiar? This leaves out the Newton annotation, which corresponds with physics. Now let's take a look at the flat earth buoyancy, which does not account for little g because it's just density and all we need is Greek letter rho. 
because gravity doesn't exist. The units for the formula become meters cubed times kilograms over meters cubed. The term meter cubed will cancel out again, leaving only kilogram, which means that the buoyant force is measured in kilogram and therefore not a force at all for flat earthers. And of course, neither is density as we mentioned earlier. So what is the force that keeps bringing things down? Why do things fall? All this model ever does is create so much paradoxes that are easily solved with physics. I guess the only good thing is that boat design engineers are not flat earthers. Better call your mama because he just got roasted. Yeah, or so some rap. <laughs> It took quite long to actually um, yeah. think of it. Flat earthers have two options. Either accept reality and admit that their model simply doesn't work when it comes to explaining falling objects and the observation and this phenomenon. Number two, deny reality, say that everything presented is wrong. Maybe an extreme person will say physics as a whole is a part of a conspiracy, which I wouldn't be surprised anymore. I was just getting started and I've already found a few problems with this gravity and density explanation. This was only part one. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope you enjoyed. Now subscribe if you're new so that you don't miss part two and all of the other videos in other subjects to follow. I'm gonna leave this here and I will see you next time. Gravity is important.